Orbit. We talk about the future tense of Orbit. I'm Giovanna, the host to talk about the future of Web3. If you like our episode, share and like with your love. Hey, today we have、uh, Renata. She's going to share her recent artwork and her art journey. Why don't you introduce yourself? Thank you, Giovanna. I'm really happy to be talking with you. I'm calling you from speaking with you from Lion's Head, Ontario, Canada. It's a very small village on the Bruce Peninsula, and it's an ideal spot to make art.、Um, we have lots of nature surrounding us. It changes daily, and it's it's very very beautiful.、Uh, mostly, I'm working on an iPad. I also treat my work with software on my desktop. But what I like about the iPad is the immediacy of Using a stylus right on the screen, even though I make digital work, I always want to have a hand-drawn component to it. I want I want to see the hand of the artist. Before I became digital, I worked in more traditional media like paper, sculpture, installation. I did a lot of different kinds of things, but once I started with digital, there was no looking back. I'm very happy and. I really like all the new. There's lots of always new developments to to explore.、Um, I'm I'm a tech expressionist artist. Yeah, that's how we met. Exactly, and it's a global, international kind of phenomenon. And what I like the most, I think, is we have a meeting once a month where we present work. And even if you don't present, there are always ideas that come up, and I get new. Influences, and I've made lots of good connections, and I've done some curatorial work recently for the movement or the the community. We did a, a project recently called Siberiana, which was a virtual world that four people from the group. Tommy Mintz was the chief architect, and we created this environment, this town square. With a series of doors, and each artist who participated got their own studio. That you you went through the door and you you arrived in their studio.、Um, for my my project for that was a, it was called Mycophilic Imaginarium, and it was all about mushrooms.、Um, one of the reasons we made Siberiana was we we as a group we had exhibited on Kunstmatrix、mm. virtually, and we we didn't like. To do the same thing with the white box gallery setting with the wooden floor,、mm-hmm. and I said, "Why don't we have a floor like in the forest, made of moss with mushrooms?" And then people just took off on that idea, and we made this t- town square with an open sky and terracotta tiles and just a very un-gallery like setting, hoping that the artists would take that idea. And many of the artists did. They made. One man made a cave out of stone for his studio, and mine. I didn't have any walls. I just had the works were were suspended in the dark, so you could go outside the work and inside the work. You could actually go through the work, and it's a for me. It was really interesting to see how you could get up really close to it, and it would. The resolution was very very good up, like at an angle.、So, So we we had a good experience with Siberiana, and now we're working on another show with、um, a couple of people whom I met about two years ago. They're called the Museum of Wild and Newfangled Art, and they purchased one of my NFTs, and that's how I was introduced to them.、Mm-hmm. They're both based in New York City, and one of them is a professor at NYU. She teaches technology and dance, and tech expressionism is working on a, 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 I guess, a virtual group show with them, and with the possibility of minting the work. Another thing I've been involved with is、uh, a show about the sea, a, a marine-based show, and it's I'm booked. We're booked to、um, present the show at the Cape Cod Museum of Art on Cape Cod in Massachusetts, and it opens in November and it runs through till end of February. 
and I'm it's a two person show and it is a show of my animations and all of them have a theme of the ocean the the name of the show is Mariniana the interrupted wave and I also just participated in the wrong digital biennale so some of the work I'm going to show you now is partly based on what I did for that. I was working with AI and I was making a series of faces and I was using Renaissance art like Botticelli. I was using 19th century French painting and drawing and I was feeding those images into the AI and combining them with my own work. So I'll give you an example now. I'll just share my screen. some recent I mean it's not super old like this is real really reasonably up to date also I because my animations um they're all on Vimeo so there's a direct link from here to all of my 50 plus animations mm. there are a few of them here on the website but let's just talk about the stills okay so um yeah this is from Siberiana mm. part nice because I wanted to have black everywhere, floor, ceiling, walls were black, but then the work became more illuminated and uh, they're not realistic mushrooms, they're completely made up, not based on reality. But what I like about mushrooms is they have this quality of um, changing. People eat mushrooms, they alter their consciousness. Uh, when I was a child, we went mushroom picking in the forest and my father knew how to choose the good ones, and we would take we would get up early and take them back and to the cottage and clean them and fry them up in butter. And he would say they they're better than steak. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm I know. a mushroom. I know some mushroom is really delicious. They are, aren't they? Yeah. So here's a here's a piece with mushrooms. Also, this is from um, one of my brushes. I, I make custom brushes. Yeah, to use I remember. And lately, well, not maybe not lately, but ever since I was a child, I was completely in love with the Belgian graphic novelist Hergé, and his main character was Tintin. And I'm just wondering if I can zoom in on this somehow. I can't. How can I make it bigger? Uh, it's not possible on this. But if you look closely, you can see him there with his little dog snowy and you can see the mushroom here and it you know continues down and goes off the canvas so these shapes also that i make are very flexible you can stretch them you can bend them and one of the things i really enjoy with making my own brushes and my own elements is it's a kind of form of collage so I often start with a background from from something that I've already made or I take a photograph in this case it's actually a photograph in the background you can see a little bit here flower it's a flower in a vase that I took in my kitchen so that's fairly recent again December or so um let's see what else this is from the the wrong uh, digital art biennale, which is every two years. And it's my third time being in it. And this year, the pavilion that I was in was called Je Delire, which means in English, I rave. And for my project, I chose to make a series of faces and animate them. Uh, you can see all of my um, still works you can see a lot of the animations on my Instagram because I tend to post the videos. They they show fairly well on social media and they show well on on many platforms. 
but it's just really hard on Zoom to show video because there's a lot of lag, as you probably know. You, you, you actually, uh, you can send me afterward, um, like mm -hmm. a J JPEG or um, small footage that I, when I okay. when I do the editing that I can edit. Um, okay, I'll send you a a, a short um, excerpt from from one of yeah, the. Yeah, yeah. I did four pieces for for that for the BNL and it, it it led me to other some other things like so for here here example is a as a painting using the face repeated with these fantastic looking kind of three dimensional these brushes I just found these brushes this one in particular was a, it's a new development that Adobe has improved their software and you can see below that below that yellow line you can see the shape of you can see the brush with the ship on it there's also a certain amount of opacity so that there are layers you can actually see through some of some of these brushes they take on the colors of the background that's behind them i really like detail i really like to go into create kind of my own world and um, i'm also very very passionate and very shall we say good with color in that I have an I have no problem coming up with color relationships. It's always been something that I just do instinctively and I don't I don't have to think about it. It just just kind of flows out of me. So I like when I'm looking at this, I like the play of you know this the aquamarine and this kind of turquoise shape down here and against all the browns and the beiges and the golds they're just sort of very there's a very nice like tension between this intensity here and this kind of soft color there i i like to use pastel colors a lot i realize because the nice thing about with digital painting is you can mix you can mix color just like you do when you're painting with oil or acrylic. Um, here's a piece that is part of, again, that same series. I'm just waiting for this to come into focus here. No, oh, there we are, okay. Um, these, these lines that I put in here, I wanted to give the illusion that, that there were things hanging. These things are hanging in the air. The background is uh, a piece that I took and I, I pixelated it to use as the ground. And then this shape here is, and this shape here, they're watercolor. So, like like many painters, I I'm trying to um, play with different planes, different uh, spatial relationships. I want I want your eye to be drawn back as far as it it can go, and um, and then you know I like to put these shapes on on top of everything to give even more dimensionality, more depth. Okay, I'm gonna pick one more. This is an interesting piece because it reminds me, it reminded me when I started working on it of a painting by the Belgian artist René Mag Magritte. He was a surrealist painter. And he made he made a head of a woman and he made her face out of the breasts of a woman were the eyes. And it, it was a very eerie, weird kind of painting. And if you look in this piece, this is piece started symmetrically. So you have half of a woman's face here and you have the other half on this side. But I don't find symmetry very interesting. It's very easy to do things symmetrically with digital, but I always make stuff go off to one side or off to the other side to make the composition more interesting. So 
again, these kind of watercolor, soft pastel areas, and then the more intricate, this is a brush, and this is a sh one of the shapes. And there's a brush made out of, um, uh, from a Tantan book. It's a, it's a drawing of a ship. Ships, actually the horn of a ship, the, making sounds. Yeah, it says after Magritte, that's the title. So I, I acknowledge that I was thinking of him. He was he was quite a master. And I I, I love art history. I, I love to make references to painters from the past because a lot of when I was younger as, a, as an art student, I went to museums to study the old masters as much as possible. And then, you know, you, you always, as an artist, you always get influenced by what came before you. Do you have any questions? I really like all the colors and all these, uh, like, kind of a surreal, lazy, and um, those image. When you create this artwork, like, like what was the, like, uh, original... Uh, any idea or concept that that let you choose the the elements for example like those uh faces or it just like simultaneously it just happened well i think one thing i've discovered about working with ai is that i don't want photographic realism i don't want it to give me a realistic image and then when I do get something from the from from the AI, like for example, this this face here, it's not interesting to me to have it just look like a face. So as you can see, I I made it into a kind of a like a space, something out of space, a, a kind of a sculptural. There's a sculptural feeling to this one. And then with this one, I overlaid it with a lot of color to give it another look. I don't want realism. I don't, I don't want to fool people to think that they're looking at something that's perfect. It's, it's an expression. This is from text or um um, I know like like Adobe recently they have a new um they have a like a new AI tools that mm -hmm. you actually text uh, to generate image or yeah, no, this is just uh, the, um, based on something um, you choose? Mm. No, I haven't actually explored the Adobe one. I think it's called Firefly. I use Mid Journey. I've been using Mid Journey since about June of 2022. Yeah. And first I did the text prompts and made images, but then they and allowed you to blend images so you can pull any images from anywhere and put five of them together and give them a certain weight and you can tell it like how how realistic you want it or how stylized you want it and it blends them sometimes you can put two if you want or three it's a little clearer you can see a little better what's happening but I like to use a lot of them. I like to pile them on top of each other. And then of course you get four images from that and you blow up one of those and you save it and then you put that into the mix. So you it's like having children, you just keep making images from the previous images. Eventually you have so many that it's it becomes not very productive. So I usually stop, I usually only do it for a little bit and then I take what I've what I've been given and I and then I morph it and I, and I color it and I stretch it and I do all kinds of things to it because I basically want the viewer to have to decipher what they're seeing I don't want to give them it's not I don't want to give them something easy to look at um are you going to um are you going to mend as NFTs or are you going to uh, showcase like a print of a physical work? It depends on the circumstance. More and more I find that the curators will say, you know, they, they want this or they want that. I like printing on metal. I like doing uh, 
sort of four foot by three foot by four foot um, rectangular on a aluminum substrate. And I, I'm really happy with how they look in that format. Um, I think I have a, an example here, this piece here, the Imperial Air, this was the, um, the flagship or the, the poster for the uh, Expressionism Digital yeah. and Beyond exhibition in Southampton. And I had this printed on a metal substrate and it, it came out looking really nicely because the metal has a certain, there's a certain amount of um, lacquer that they can put on top so that it it glows, it pops. And um, this piece here, I'm going to be showing this summer in Brooklyn, also on metal. And this was actually my first NFT that I sold. I sold it in the Tezos, on Tezos blockchain on object.com. It's called The Rocket Escapes the Flytrap. So I'm having this one printed on, on metal. And I'm also going to make an animation of it, and I'm going to have um, the gallery visitors can open their iPhone. There's Wi-Fi in the gallery. They can download the Art Vive app onto their phone, and they can point it at the painting on the wall, and it'll come to life with music on their on their phone. So I'm, and I'm, I've because I, it's already been minted. It's not going to that that's its life as an nft but it, it has another life you know yeah on, the physical on. work yeah and with the um, vr i think it's, it's not that easy to choose like whether um like what type of uh, uh media you you want to use or um especially for digital image sometimes it's tough that that i have a hard time to choose like whether I don't know what type of materials like I should pick like paper or like metal or something like the even the the the, the color um the it can be it, it can look really different if you choose a different type of papers uh, yeah I I printed this one on a uh, Hanamula rag paper from Germany and I had a really good printer yeah. He does fine art printing, and it came out really, really well on paper. And I had it, it because it's all black. I put a white mat around it and a white frame, and it 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 really worked for that one because there's a lot of detail. It's a bit like an engraving. It's a bit like one of those 19th century botanicals. You know how they used to do the very elaborate flower or the very elaborate leaves or seashells. It has that feeling for me. So that I would, that I actually had made as a sample to take so that when you go to a, a gallery, they could show the person one example in a frame, and then they could show 10 other examples on paper in a folder and say, see, this is what it looks like when you print it and frame it. And then the person can choose what they want. But I, I like metal better because it's it's more it has this feeling of more durability and more sort of impact, and you don't have to frame it when it's on metal because it's 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 a it's a whole thing unto itself. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, anything else you like to talk about your work or uh, what is your uh the earliest upcoming uh, shows? Um, well, there's this show in Brooklyn, which opens in August on the 7th. Tomorrow, goes to, yeah. yeah, Hello Brooklyn, and it goes till um, uh, September 25th. And then there's a show in Cape Cod that opens on November, just trying to see here the date, November 21st it opens, and it finishes on February the 9th. Um, I, I do want to mint um, some more of my animations. I've, I've got a fair, fair number of pieces on object. I've got some pieces on foundation as well. And I also have a whole bunch of pieces on first dibs. So my animations and my still works both are available on all those three platforms. And I'm just watching what's going on with NFTs and trying to figure out what the next frontier is and how to best reach people with with my works in that in that category 
and and then I'm I'm in a show right now that's on um, on a VR platform. It's called the Loop Art Critique, and the show is a mixture of um, still works and video works. I have a video piece in the show, and the the resolution is extremely good. I'm really really pleased with that platform, how well it works, and that's on for a few more months, I think until September. And that was curated by the Museum of Wild and, and Newfangled Art. And they're they're really interesting people. They have a, a really strong um, interest in helping artists to sell. They, they believe that artists should be paid for their work and paid well. And they also have a kind of overview on Web3 and they they they're really like philosophers of what's going on. And they, they've actually just sunsetted all of their social media platforms and they're they're working more on just places like Object and Loop and other um websites rather than going through the traditional channels of you know Twitter, X, Facebook, etc. So they're interesting and They'll be speaking at our salon on uh, this coming Thursday. I'm going to be moderating the next Texpressionist Salon, which is always on the first Thursday of every month at 12 noon Eastern time. Okay. And the topic this, this week is money. So I've got some, some very interesting people lined up to speak about the topic. And I think we're, we'll have a good, a good discussion because it's something that it's always a, it's always a, a problem in a way for artists. How are they going to support their work? Yeah, <laughs> it's a better time now. We used to do it later, and less people could come. But now we can get people from India and from um, oh, other parts yeah, of the world. Side. Iran. They can they can join us without a problem. Germany, it's good. So yeah, you should try to come. Thank you for sharing. Um... My pleasure. Yeah, sure. I really like her. <laughs> oh, Marlena, yeah, this is the Marlin Spike collection on Foundation. Yeah. And it's it's videos telling a story. Nice. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay. All hey, right. Bye-bye.